next speaker is Dr. Mohamed Azam. He's a uh, consultant in emergency medicine, trauma and critical care medicine at the King Abdul Aziz National Guard Medical City in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia. And he'll be talking about CT coronary for risk chest pain. Where does it fit in the emergency department management? Please help me in welcoming Dr. Mohamed Azam. Good morning, everybody. Thank you, Salah, for your <coughs> present, uh, for your introduction, and I thank the SM uh, Society for inviting me to speak in uh, in this conference. Uh, today, I'm going to be talking about application of coronary CT in the emergency department. One question before I start: All our emergency physicians, do we have other specialties? You're radiologist. If you're not answering, you're radiologist, definitely. All the emergency physicians? Yes or no? Yeah? Okay. So basically, uh, the, my talk is going to be, as I said, I'm just talking about coronary CTs. I'm not talking about uh, triple, triple rule out CT, so I'm not talking about a CT for chest pain, like aortic dissection or PH, just for acute coronary syndrome. I have no disclosure. Uh, uh, my outline, as I'm going to talk about, I'm going to talk about the problem. Why? So why are we interested in this? And we want to know if there actually CT coronary is a solution. Uh, and should it be in the upfront decision? So us doing, taking the decision to do emergency uh, uh, CT coronaries. And, and if you were going to do that, so who do we need to come up with this uh, protocol? And what do actually we need? and some lingering issues, and if we have some time, we'll talk about the, uh, we'll have some discussion. <clears throat> okay, so the problem is acute coronary syndrome, right? We see a lot of them in the emergency department. Uh, there's about, as you see, eight to 10 million ED chest pain presentations. Not all of them have acute coronary syndrome. It's a small part of them that has acute coronary syndrome. And we do a lot of workup, and sometimes we admit them to the hospital and we find that they don't have other diagnosis other than acute coronary syndrome. But the problem, if we miss an acute coronary syndrome, or we had someone who had an intermediate risk and then they leave and they come back, they can, might come back in an acute myocardial infarction or they might come dead. So that's a big, huge problem that if we miss them. Now, two perceptions, right? Cardiologists and us. So cardi cardiologists are, are thinking about is, first of all, does the patient have acute coronary syndrome? Uh, what's the risk of uh, morbidity and mortality? Uh, how are we gonna stratify them? And how are we gonna do, manage their long-term, uh, uh, how are we gonna do a risk assessment, long-term risk, and how are we gonna manage them long-term? Now, for us ER, I'm gonna get him out of the ER. This is my first qu thing I wanna do. Can I get him out as fast as possible, or I have to admit him? Again, we always think, okay, if I discharge him, there's a, some, a bad, something bad that will happen to him in the next 30 days or 90 days. And where are we going to admit them? Admit them. Some hospitals have emergency uh, chest evaluation units, and they might get admitted there, or some hospitals admit under cardiology. Do you actually have, in your department, do you have emergency chest evaluation rooms? I don't have in my hospital. We get, they get admitted in the hospital. Anyone in the crowd? Boy, very tough crowd, huh? Do you work actually in the emergency department? No? Okay, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> All right. So, so the goals of the chest pain evaluation uh, place, or as I said, the emergency chest uh, evaluation rooms, uh, you want to exclude the diagnosis. Again, you want to discharge them safely. You want to triage them appropriately, so we don't want to get over triage of cases, and then do a good assessment. And if you want to do a good test in this chest evaluation room and make sure that when you discharge them with the negative result, they don't have something bad. And you have to be very efficient. Uh, different ways of risk stratification. There is the clinic way, Timmy risk score, you probably heard of that. 
for unstable angina. So with that score, you can put the patient in categories low, intermediate, or high. Uh, zero to two is a low. And these are the, actually the ones that we're interested in. So the one, if you have enough gray hair that you just look at them, you think that this is a low risk, or if you want to use some uh, tools to help you. So the zero to two rule is the low risk people that we look at. And what do we do usually? We do stress testing. Depends on where you're working. You do some, some people will do invasive uh, uh, risk assessment. So we're talking about angio. Some people will do some test MR, MRI, echo, uh, stress test. Problem with all these tests, they never change uh, admission rate for this patient. They never decrease the ED visit, revisit rates. So we will have someone who have a stress echo or stress test that was done a month ago or two weeks ago, and then he comes back, you cannot just say because he did a stress test, he's fine, he can go. You're still going to have to re-examine re him again. And also, it did not change the cath rate. So, so these tests did not help us. So is the CT the solution? So the concept of a CT coronary is you're actually doing a specific cardiac test and looking at the coronaries like you're doing an angio, okay? Uh, so, a lot of studies have been done. I'm going to go through one important study or two, but there's a lot of study that has been done. Single center, multi center, uh, they found CT is safe. It actually, you decrease less than 1% your three day event rate. Uh, we, we, as emergency physician or in general, we cardiologists, we want to decrease the miss rate of MI to this. That's our goal. So when you're talking about like ASIP and CAPE, this is what they want. They want us to have a minimum rate than less than 1%. So that's if you, get, you find that test that can decrease your risk less than 1%, that's, that's our goal. Okay. Uh, apparently, CT costs less than admitting people in the hospital. I know some hospitals are different. Uh, CT reduced repeated ED visits and readmission. These are the studies like... Uh, you guys can have my slides after to look at the studies. Uh, also, there is some observational study that has been done uh, and showed uh, that CT, negative CTs, people did not have major uh, acute cardiac events or major adverse cardiac events. Now, uh, this, this study, CT STAT, is a multi-center RCT in Michigan. 699 patients at 16 sites. Again, there was 54% reduction in time to diagnosis. These are the things that are important for us in ER. So these people spent less time when we did the CT instead of keeping them and repeating, uh, repeating tropes and then getting them admitted just to do a risk assessment. Uh, the important thing also is actually you did not have uh, a lot of major cardiac, uh, adverse cardiac event. So 0.75. And this study was also compared to SPECT MPI. So SPECT is nuclear medicine. So you're doing, you're doing nuclear medicine perfusion scan to look at uh, perfusion of the, of the heart. Uh, of course, a little bit different, but again, both of them are less than 1%. Now, this ACRINA study is one of the big studies, uh, multicentral studies. It's a multicenter comparing CCTA, so coronary CTA, based strategy uh, versus traditional care. And it was done in different sites, big centers. Uh, now, the traditional care is actually the traditional care. So there was no protocolized for us. So it depends. You're working in this site. You do troponin, single troponins, or uh, sorry, uh, you do your tr uh, double troponin, and then if negative, you send them as an outpatient, or you stress them immediately in the hospital. So it depends on your protocol. Uh, their goal, the primary hypothesis was patient without significant coronary artery disease by CTA have less than 1% rate of 30 days. So they wanted to make sure that if they have a negative CT, uh, CT then they're not going to have cardiac death or I'm more than 1%. And then their secondary goal was ED discharge rate and length of stay. So they want to compare which one has less the length of stay. 30 day uh, major adverse cardiac effect and who needed revascularization more, and three, 30 days resource utilization. You had to be more than 30 years old and actually have symptoms, and you're low risk, and need for admission 
for testing to clues. So the physician actually in the ER decided that this patient need to be admitted. Even that he knew that he, he thought he's a low risk, but he's going to admit him. So the Timmy score here is zero two. So I say again, a little bit the physician. So these are like, if you think about it, these are people that a little bit high risk. If I thought that they, even I said low, but I thought that they need to be to come in the hospital. So they already, the physician triaged them a little bit riskier. Now, if it's clear non-cardiac, so they were excluded. If they had the comorbidity requiring hospital admission, so they were, whether they had chest pain or not, they were going to be admitted, so they did not do, excluded them. And coronary CT, that was normal. In the, and this is one of the benefits, maybe, or potential benefits, that if you had a coronary CT that was negative, and then you, you came, came back with, the, uh, with, uh, with, the, with, the, with symptoms, and you're still low risk, you probably don't have co acute coronary syndrome. Comparing to the other studies of stress test and echo, you're, you, you have to work them again. Uh, normal, uh, sorry, and contraindication of, of CT in general. You have renal impairment, you have hypersensitivity. Uh, so the, the, you, it, you have to have at least a 64 multi dextrose slide. So if, you, if you're in your hospital, you don't have that, so forget about what we're talking about. You need to get the machine before you even start thinking about it. Uh, and they also had to give the patient, that's one of the things that are also important about coronary CT to do before you get the test, so otherwise the test is not going to good, is you have to have their heart rate slow. So they give them beta blockers, and they give them nitroglycerin so to, ha to have the uh, arteries large so they can see and dilated. Did I go to the next one? Yeah. Did it move? Sorry. Yeah, so they did a good follow-up. Okay, and they recorded all what they wanted to record for. <clears throat> and their out they had definition for their outcome. So a significant coronary artery disease is more than 50% stenosis in the big vessels. Uh, indetermined test, if you had an area where it's non-diagnosis and you saw the rest, that was okay. So that was an undetermined test. And again, the definition of acute coronary syndrome, acute myocardial infarction is as we know it. So what are the results of their studies? So geogra uh, 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 geographically, of course, sorry, characteristically, demographically, they are like, they're the same. Uh, 1,391 uh, 1, subjects that was uh, recruited in the study. Some of them were removed post-randomization. Some of them because they had, either they decided not to have the test uh, or their heart rate was not, they, didn't, they weren't able to control their heart rate so they couldn't do the test. So the point was sim both of them had similar cath rate. CT had a little bit more patient having cath, uh, a cath lab uh, other than the uh, a group. Uh, they had almost the same outcome. There was no difference really in their revascularization. There was no change in the uh, uh, adverse event after. But significantly, the time was shorter in the ER. In the next slide, we're going to see it. So there was no major adverse cardiac event, 0%. But it was always the, 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 the time was shorter in the emergency department. So they spend less time in the ER. Even if they got admitted, they spend less time. So if they got him admitted to the evaluation room that we talked about, uh, they spend less time in the uh, in the emergency room. So that's, that's important. That's one of the things that are important uh, if you're going to consider this uh, modality in your hospital. And again, there was, as I said, no significant difference in 30-day resources. So cath was the same, revascularization was the same, repeat ED visit was the same, rehospitalization was the same. So the only thing that we did actually is we just kept them in the emergency in a shorter time and we did not have to admit them. Uh, some of the limitations, now, this is, this is, this is one study, a multi-center study, and it's a, it's a, it was done well, but uh, you need bigger numbers before we, we, go, we, we talk about uh, uh, a new technology that we want to introduce. Uh, now, there was 
do we, the other question we have to ask ourselves, do we need to actually to test them? Is there a reason to test them? If these are people are low risk, is, not an, is it enough that we just do the troponin, sing, uh, uh, our triprin, serial troponin, and then send them home, and if it's negative, that's it? Uh, or we have to do testing? And the study was compared, it was compared already to testing versus testing. So two tests were done. So there's no studies really that are done to compare this for uh, no testing. Uh, there are studies comp comparing testing with no testing, not for CT, for other things. So stress test or, uh, uh, excuse me, sir. Or stress echo or other modalities of risk stratification. Now the, the, other, the other problem is with CT, as we know, or radiation exposure, we, you heard that from other t uh, talks. So in the radiation exposure studies, uh, they in, when you do the coronary CT, actually you don't have that much of radiation. Uh, they, go, they can actually go up to 60 millisievert uh, when, they're doing their, when they're doing the test. So it's a very minimal uh, uh, radiation dose. Very technology dependent, you have to be trained to actually read these CT scans. So you, as, a cardi as a radiologist, you do a subspecialty in cardiac, cardiac CT scan to be able to do that or to be able to read them. <clears throat> just for the sake of time, so this is just talking about radiation doses. Uh, now, this is another study which had exactly the same outcome if you go to the... Uh, so they actually they had higher catheters. So you're picking because it's very it's a very sensitive test. Right? So you're picking stuff. You're picking uh, calcification, and and that's why you think that they have more stuff. So they, when, once we see something, we do something about it. Uh, so that's why they had higher cath rate. Uh, same thing in in terms of the ED. Definitely, ED visit was cheap, uh, shorter, and they spend less time in the hospital. Now, I'm not, th these are a couple of slides about effectiveness but, uh, and efficiency and the cost, but it doesn't apply to us because it's done somewhere else. So uh, we have, if we're going to think about it, we have to think, uh, study it in our uh, country. Uh, upfront, this is, so what type of patient do you want to study? So if we're going to do that, so it's, it's the patient's Again, we said triple out is the triple out uh, CT or triple rule out CT. Is if you wanted to do someone with chemical chest pain and you do the CT to look at PE, aortic dissection, and acute coronary, but that's not my topic. You want to choose the low risk patients, and you want the you want the people that you can discharge them. So you might have someone with chest pain, but he's already ill or or debilitated or old, and he has other problems. So maybe doing the CT in this group is not is worthless because they're gonna get to the hospital anyways. So it's the people that you wanna discharge them. So how are we gonna come up with the, how are we gonna build this? It's, it's a multidisciplinary uh, team that has to sit together and decide if they're gonna actually use this uh, in their facility or not. Emergency physician, nurses, uh, radiologists, cardiologists, uh, techni you have to have good technician that they can do the CT. Uh, this is a service that's gonna be 24 Seven, you cannot just say I'm going to do it in the morning, but it's, uh, you're not going to do it to people at night. So th all this is a lot of resources that need to uh, be implemented to get this done. Uh, you need a protocol, definitely. You cannot just open it to, to our decision just to, to decide who should get it and who should not get it. Uh, uh, the clinical decision is important. However, once you decide that, you have to go in a chain of protocol so these patients don't get lost. <coughs> this is, uh, Pennsylvania has a nice protocol. You, as I said, you're going to have the slides so you can look at it. Uh, so what are the CT disadvantages? So it cannot, as we said, it can't be applied to everyone. So patient with renal, impatient, uh, renal impairment, patient who have high heart rate and we cannot control it, uh, contrast allergy, or very large patients. And the risk of radiation, I think, is minimal. I, I should, I should, we should not consider the risk of radiation because actually they get very low doses of, of radiation. Now, you're also going to, what's going to happen, you're going to see more incidental findings. Uh, 
And as part of the protocol, you have to deal with this. So you did a CT and you did not see, uh, you did not see a, a acute co uh, coronary syndrome, but then you saw it a mass, a lung mass. So what are you going to do with this? So they need to be followed up. And ac actually, you're going to find a lot of, uh, so no, uh, uh, you will find about 12% or 19% of other causes uh, of other incidental finding not related to, and some of them are actually pulmonary nude, emphysema, mediastin adenopathy. These people need to, so once you do that, what are you going to do? So you have to have uh, a system uh, to follow these patients. So take home message, Corona CT Andrew is promising. Uh, I think we have it in our hospital and we have two cardiologists, uh, sorry, cardiac radiologists and we're actually putting the protocol, but we're, but we're using it. And I think it's, uh, it has a very good potential. However, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of multidisciplinary team that has to sit and decide if you're going to do it in your hospital or not. Thank you very much.